Welcome to Desert Mountain Fine Art. We are here today with Ken Rowe, my hero. <laughs> and the fact that it rhymes wasn't on purpose, but um, we're, we're honored to have you in. I absolutely love your bronzes. Um, and welcome to Desert Mountain Fine Thank Art. Thank you. I'm very, very flattered to be here. I feel like family, and this is oh, just perfect you are. to be in, this, in, in your new house. This oh. is amazing. I love your gallery. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. It's, yeah. Your, your work feels at home here. Now, of course, I mean, how long have we known each other now? 22 years. 22, so that makes me seven? You were seven when I, was I met seven. Okay. Yeah, when we met you. Yeah, yeah. It's like my Uncle Ken. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way. Pretty I much. Feel that way. Um, oh, gosh, I mean, so, so tell me a little bit about how you got started in bronze. Well, I came from the odd world of taxidermy. <laughs> and it taught me at the time, I was, this is 1980, my wife and I, which were both born and raised here mm -hmm. in Sedona, I mean, Phoenix, sorry. Uh, opened our own tax room shop and about the five year mark I figured this is not what I'm going to do the rest of my life. Mm. So with that in mind I took a college course in sculpture at okay. Glendale Community College and I was instantly hooked. It was one of those situations in life where you feel like somebody just took a rubber hammer and hit you over the head and said this is it and I knew that was it. The beauty of it was is being a, in the tax free business and knowing and studying the anatomy as much as we had to, mm -hmm. it was a perfect segue. Mm -hmm. So for nine years, I did tax me by day and sculpting bronzes by night. Wow. And so it took me that long. And then thanks to your father. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, thanks to your father. He gave me my biggest break, without wow. a doubt. Without a doubt. How, how did you guys meet? Well, I met your dad the first time. He didn't know who I was. <laughs> at his gallery in Tlacopaki in Sedona. Okay. And so, ironically, about a month later, I'm flipping through the channels on Channel 8, here sculpting with Ken Payne. <laughs> and here I am, a beginning sculptor, and I thought, oh my God, this is amazing. So I would sculpt on the kitchen table as your dad was giving his little tutorials and telling his stories. <laughs> and so at the time, the Western market was on fire. Oh, I mean, it yeah. was like, I got into a gallery in Scottsdale, mm -hmm. and the stipulation was, we'll take your work, but you have to sculpt Western, mm -hmm. because wildlife doesn't sell. <laughs> so anyway, so now I'm, the, I'm a Western sculptor. All right. So one day, after I'd been in that gallery about six months, I walk in, and guess who's in the gallery looking at my work? Your dad. <laughs> And I thought, I cannot miss this opportunity to introduce myself. So I did. And about two weeks later, he called and said, is this Ken Rowe? And I said, sure. He says, the guy I got an offer you'll never be able to refuse. I want to make you my feature artist in my gallery in Sedona. And so instantly, overnight, I went from a taxidermist to a full-time sculptor because of and, your And father. you still owned your taxidermy shop. Yeah, we shut it all down. You, just leap of faith. Yep. Bam, you shut it down. I mean, One of those. That was your income, right? I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, primary income it at that was, time. Yeah. So our sole income. Wow. And so you just and quit. Quit everything. We sold and started the house, sculpting sold full time. the property, closed the, the studio, did everything based on your dad's uh, offer, mm -hmm. his generous offer. Wow. And to make it even better, <laughs> he said, I guarantee you'll make X number of dollars a month. And if you don't, I'll pay you. And he was so proud of the fact he never had to pay me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he would be proud of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So we hit the ground running, That's thanks neat. to your dad, and it was just... Well, and I, then, in his wisdom, oh. he said, why aren't you sculpting wildlife? You were a taxidermist. And I go, well, because I was told it, wasn't sell, it wouldn't sell. He says, why, why wouldn't it? So instantly, gla and gladly, I started sculpting wildlife. And it was, it's been 22 years of just absolute, incredible success. I mean, you, you are one of the, if not the, I mean, at least in, in the circles I've been running in, a premier wildlife sculptor. Oh, thank you. Thank I, I you. mean, and, and the, the work you're doing, tell me a little bit about, I mean, your style's changed a bit over the years. It has. Um, I remember when I was seven, seeing your work, and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> And the me memories are, you know, cloudy, but they're there. <laughs> well, it's interesting because as an artist, you, you want to develop your own signature and your own style. Yeah. But, you know, the big question is, you were saying with your other uh, great artists you're interviewing is what is what is your style what is what are you trying to define in your work well mm -hmm. with me um, you find out very very quickly that anatomy is way down the list on what defines really good fine art oh, and sculpture yeah. the storyline the composition and that is so vitally important 
So to answer that question, how my work has changed, I went from using reference that I had in my tax shop when I first started. This, this month is my 30 year anniversary of sculpting. Happy anniversary. Thank you. <laughs> so 30 years ago when I was sculpting, I was using reference that was dead. And guess what my work looked like? Hmm. It was dead. Yeah. So then I started studying the masters and what they did and started studying other artists I really admired and I realized they're using live reference. So I learned that if you want to capture life in your bronzes, you have to use life, live animals. That makes sense. So it made it, it was very challenging because where do you find a captive bison? Where do you find a captive bobcat? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's tricky. So my greatest resource has been wildlife rehab centers and they've okay. given me these tremendous liberties to get access to these animals. Mm -hmm. So what I want people to know when they look at my work is there's an authentic passion and a total obsession for capturing what I have in front of me and that animal is in front of me when I'm sculpting it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, the look this bobcat has here was a look she would give me when I got too close to her enclosure because she had these little cubs. That makes so much sense. Yeah. And even the, the, the peacefulness of the cubs, the complete trust. Mm -hmm. I love this piece just because of that. But Thank you. Anyway, it, all of your work, it has these just, it, it really does, I feel like, capture the soul of the Thank animal you. more Thank so you. than just the anatomy. And well, and it's interesting too, the experiences I've had in working with animals have been so profound that, mm -hmm. that they, just one experience that comes to mind is I was working with a captive grizzly bear in, I in Idaho. It was very big, 900 pound <laughs> male. And the handlers of these animals are who you really trust. Because right. they're not gonna give you access to these animals if they don't feel that it's safe or anything else. Right. Well, on day three of sculpting this rendition of what I thought was a fairly good rendition of this grizzly bear, the handler says, would you like to touch the bear? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So he said, okay, this is the deal. You, you get behind me, we're gonna walk up to the bear, which he handles a lot. And he said, when we get to the bear, you're gonna reach around me as if it's my arm and you're gonna let him smell your hand. And so we did, I put my hand around, the bear started nursing on the palm of my hand, mm -hmm. which I didn't know at the time, but that's a sign of acceptance in the grizzly world. Okay. So the handler said, okay, come on around, you're fine, but this is the deal. You do not get out of his peripheral vision stay in front of him where he can see you. He does, I don't want you to touch his hindquarters and he, he thinks you're a gnat and you get smacked. Oh, wow, that would hurt. So, <laughs> yeah, that would hurt, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I ran over, got my sculpture, set it in front of him and put my hand back out again to touch him and at that moment, he exhaled on me. And it was like a draft horse. The volume within that animal, with all the senses I already had earlier of how huge he was, but that point where he exhaled on my hand made all the scents come together. Like this animal is huge. Look at this thing now. It changed every grizzly bear I've ever done ever since. Wow. Because he exhaled on me. And that, that just made sense with all my interaction with him and how big he really was. Wow. Well, the, the work you do, and by the way, I, we, we want some of your grizzly berries. Oh, you'll, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know absolutely. they've all sold out, but we won't want well, we'll, one we'll of your next We'll make you more ones, gladly. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'll get more access to them. Oh, well, um, it, it's just such an honor to get to continue being your friend, being you. your family, and, and, and to get to share your work with the people here yeah. in Scottsdale. I mean, there's, you have so many supporters in the mm -hmm. area, so many mm -hmm. collectors. Yeah. Um, but really, it, it's, it's this dream that's just continued. You continuing to create beauty mm -hmm. and continuing to give people new compositions and new compelling pieces. I mean, mm -hmm. in all of your work, I don't feel like I've seen the same piece twice, mm -hmm. which no. for somebody who sculpted a dozen bears, that's, that's saying a lot. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's, you know, I think it's, I feel uh, it's a privilege to be part of the pain, pain legacy. Oh. And your father and now you and now being here, it's just all part of this entire beautiful uh, synchronicity, synchronicity that I really love, and I'm, I'm proud to be part of it. Well, we love you, and we Thank love you. your art. I'm not sure which I love more, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with you. Either one will so, you um, Thank you for visiting Desert Mountain Fine Art with Ken Rowe today. Um, you can see his gallery as well in Sedona if you're ever in the area. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, come wet your whistle for the great work that he does here at Desert Mountain Fine Art, and we'll see you soon.